Welcome to CAS 133 Columbia Gorge Community College, the Dallas, Oregon, Mrs. Hewen instructor. This video is going to be your first video of the term. If you were in a regular face-to-face -face class, you would have five hours of lecture time each week. I promise you this video would be much shorter than that. But I do want to make it long enough. It really gets you a good start to the term and gets you off on the right foot. So, you've just arrived in the course. Maybe you're new to online courses. So let's take a little tour. First thing first, you can move these by using the, the pluses and minuses. You can expand and contract by using the arrows. You can shove them over and add them to here so you don't have to have them there on your side. You're going to read right down the middle and it's going to kind of introduce you to things, including my email address right here for you. It's also going to tell you that you really should have a reading level of passing the ready for 115, writing 115, and CS 121 or keyboarding by touch. If not, everything's going to take you a whole lot longer than it does other students if you're trying to do it without those basic underneath foundational skills. Our preferred software is going to be Microsoft Office 2013 365 for a PC. However, on a Mac, the most current one is Office 2011. If you already have 2011, you're good to go. However, 2011 does not match 2013 exactly, so you will be having to do some modifications, adaptations, and work a little bit harder because they have not updated that software anymore. If you have a Mac and you do not have 2011 software on it yet for Office, you're going to want to buy the 365. The cheapest place to get Office programs is at the CGCC bookstore because you can buy it with a student discount and it is tons cheaper than going to a retail or even going online for purchasing it. Now if you have 2010 on it already, Office 2010, and you would like to use that and not purchase the new one, you may. You'll be in the same position as the people using the Macs will be. You're going to have to do some adaptation and matching, but it definitely can be done with just a little bit of extra effort. 2007 software is starting to push it a bit, and if you get anything older, it's not going to work. So you have to be at least into the newer software. Sometimes students say, well, can I do it with Open Office? Can I do it with um, Google Docs software? You can try it, but your success isn't going to be very good. Um, and a lot of times if you're doing this so that you're ready for a job, jobs are going to be using Microsoft Office, and that is the skill they're going to want you to have. So you're looking at 2013 as being the preferred or 365. You do need a PC or a Mac for this class. You're not going to be able to use like an iPad, an iTouch, an iPhone, tablet PC, any of those types of things are really not going to be workable. Um, you also need the Linux operating system. You must have the correct textbook. It needs to be the 2013 version. If you get an older book, you're just going to have to turn around and buy the newer book, which won't save you any money. For the first two weeks, you do not need the software or the textbook. You can do everything without it, except there are some PowerPoints to view. So if you go out to Microsoft, www.microsoft.com, and you go, they always change your site. So what you see here won't be what here is here when you look, because that's an ongoing thing. But you go to like their software and their apps, or their downloads, I think is probably what you really want. And you go to the downloads and you want to, want to download a PowerPoint viewer. You'll notice it says PowerPoint viewer right there. You're able to go in and download that PowerPoint viewer, install it on your machine, it will let you view PowerPoints. If you're not going to buy your own software at all and you want to work at home some and then do your projects at the college, I would suggest you do in fact get the PowerPoint viewer. Otherwise, you're going to have a lot of issues with it. I am not seeing it right here, but there it is. Download the PowerPoint viewer type of thing. So you're going to have to go hunt it down, find it, and install it. Ah, install the PowerPoint viewer for 07. So sometimes you have to do some extra viewing for 
2013. I will tell you the viewer for 2013 will probably, or for 27 will probably look, download the PowerPoint viewer. So you just have to go in and do some hunting until you find it. I may not have the exact page up there because they're always changing it, but please go in hunt it. Get the viewer, the 07 or the 10 will work because it's all in the same file format and you just need to have the viewer available. Now, if you have an older type of PowerPoint on your machine, you can use it for watching videos or for the PowerPoints and the videos and things like that can be done at home and then go to the college or another machine to do the other work. So you can play with that a little bit, see how it matches up the best for you as possible. Starting the third week of class though, you have to have the book and you have to have access to software to be able to create your projects. As you get down here, you're going to start with the start here. It's going to talk you through the syllabus, course content, grading rubric, late work, extra credit type information. We'll look at that in a minute. This is a 100% online class. There are no class sessions. We never meet on the college campus. You do it only from your computer. All work is due Saturday night at 11.55, which is basically midnight. You do need to plan your work time during the week to allow approximately 10 hours. If this was face-to-face, -face, you'd be in a classroom for five, and you'd have about five hours of homework. Now, obviously, your typing and reading speeds are going to impact how long it actually takes you. There are no set office hours, so if you have a problem or concern, contact me by email. I try to monitor my email pretty closely. That way I use my phone a lot for replies. Please excuse typos. It's well known that I cannot type on those silly little keypads. Fat fingers. I do the best I can. Try to get you an answer as quick as possible. You should hear back within 24 hours. That means don't wait until 10 o'clock on Saturday night to be doing work that's due in two hours because you may not hear back. The college allows 48 hours for a reply but you should never be over 24. I try to keep it always under 12. I try to check my email at least twice a day. Even when I'm on the road or flying or things like that, I try to check at least twice a day. And sometimes it's gonna be quite quick turnaround. You'll find that you hear back within anywhere from minutes to a few hours. This is not a self-paced class. It will have links opened and closed as we go. But it is a paperless class. You do not submit anything on paper. Everything is through Moodle and everything is, other than one assignment that is email, everything is through Moodle. Also, all your materials are through Moodle. I won't be emailing you materials or sending you materials. It's already all in Moodle ready for you and waiting. You will be posting to a forum each week, at least one. Sometimes there may be two and you will be doing a reply to each one of those. Projects in the book do need to match the book pretty much exactly. Um, I realize colors and fonts can be an issue, not only with 2013, because Microsoft stole some of them that are supposed to be there, but if you're using another version, so you're just gonna have to be really good at looking and matching. We'll talk more about that later. So now you're moving into the get, getting started point. You have your get started here, you have your meet your instructor, your course syllabus, I know there are classes where they spend the whole first day reading the course syllabus to you. I remember it well. However, I will not do that. So you're going to need to go in and read that syllabus, maybe even print a copy. It's going to give you a lot of the policies, procedures, and information for this course. Assignment sheet sort of tells you what has to be done each week. You may want to print a copy so that you can cross it off when you've got it done. Course content, guidelines, great, uh, guides for 133. Grading rubric and information. It's kind of important to know how things are being graded. Extra credit information. Students will ask, well, can I do extra credit? Yep, here's the information. Late work policies. Always good to know if you have late work or you think you're going to have late work. Make sure you've read the policy so you know what you can and cannot do. Instructor's form is really important. That will allow you to keep track of what's going on in class. You'll know when I've had to make changes or Microsoft has made another change that messes us up. Whatever it might be, I post it there. I also give you guidelines, suggestions, directions. Those are full class announcements. There are things in them sometimes that may not apply directly to you. If so, it's okay. Don't panic. But it means it applies to a lot of the students at this moment. 
always read them carefully. You should get an email, but Moodle has been known lately to not be doing it. Three times in the last three weeks, it's quit sending emails. So please don't assume that I'm not posting. If you're not seeing it, make sure you're going in here and you're actually reading it. One of the course requirements is you're logging in every 48 hours and that you are checking this forum. Coffee shop's another matter. It's not a three and then ask me. It's not class questions or anything like that. I don't monitor it much. It is just a chat area for students. Oh, I want to put together a study group. Anybody else going to be on campus tomorrow at 3 o'clock? We can meet in the library. Put it in the coffee shop. Or my car just broke down. I need a ride from Hood River to the Dells. Anybody going tomorrow afternoon at such and such a time or about that time that would be willing to give me a ride? Things like that. Resources. QM requires policy statements, so there you go. Student Moodle, if you're not used to Moodle, there's some Q&As, question and answers. You need some help, the college tutoring link is there. This is the help, I'm stuck, now what? And it is basically going to let you know where you can get some help. If you have a class question, you obviously send it to me. I'll try to help you as much as I can. If you're having technical issues like loading software, Moodle, can't get something to work on your machine, you can go see Ron Watrous at the library. He is part of the college IT, internet technical support team, and he basically is there to help students with problems with Moodle and technical issues. I do suggest you contact him ahead of time and make arrangements because he does help instructors as well. He does repairs. He's out and about around the campus, and he does occasionally get to have a vacation as well. So make sure you make arrangements. Also on the Dallas campus, I know the library staff have been great over the years when students have questions and they go up and ask them. They've been really good about trying to help students as much as they can with different things. So those are a few of your options if you get stuck. Now, one other thing I want to show you. You'll notice up here, there's suddenly a check mark there. This is a kind of a dotted box. Basically, these boxes have been added to help you keep track of what you've looked at. You can see that Recently, I haven't opened a lot of these things, and so it's not showing that those have been opened. As soon as you've opened something, it will add the checkbox automatically for you. It helps you if you get stopped in the middle of something and you had to go to school, to work, feed your kids, fix your dinner, whatever it might be, and you're now coming back trying to remember where you were. Those checkboxes should help you make sure you've done everything. If it's optional and you might not need it, the checkbox is solid and you can add the check when you've used it like I just did. I cannot see those checkboxes. They're not part of your grades. Don't tell me they're not working or something like that because really they're there for your help only. So what do you have to get done really before the class starts? This is kind of pre-work to even get you into the class. This is sort of your admission ticket. Um, because unfortunately there are issues with cheating and plagiarism and things like this. You have to sort of go through this hoop before you even get to take the class. So you're going to come in here, you're going to read this information, you're going to take this online quiz, you're going to open that up. You're going to go in here, you're going to open this link. You can take the pretest, see how you do, do your studying and take the post test. Now, you need to make sure you send it to me by email. My email address is listed right here. I suggest you copy and paste. Typos get you. You also add your own email address so that you get a copy sent to you. That way, if when I do grades, you don't find that I post your grade, you can always forward me a copy of it. You cannot retake this test once you've taken the pretest and once you've taken the post test you're pretty much done and you're going to need to go back and find another computer to redo it on if you don't do those emails correctly. So please make sure you copy and paste my email and add your email. Then you need to watch this short video on cheating and take this six question quiz. Now, all of this has to be done by Thursday at 8 o'clock to get to stay in the class. Otherwise, I'm going to drop you from the class.
Yes, that 8 o'clock is a firm time. At 8.01, I'm probably going to be sitting there and starting to drop students. Once you are dropped, you are dropped. If for any reason you're unable to complete these activities, you need to be in touch with me and see if we can work something out before that 8 o'clock. And that is 8 o'clock p.m. The first form is here. How to correctly do a form is listed here. This one has been acting up. Hopefully by the time you watch this, we will have figured out what was wrong with it. It will be a nice form again. Moodle occasionally just does weird and strange things for us. And then from there, you need to move right into week one. This is maybe an hour of work. This is kind of a pre-work thing. This should not take you very long to do. And you need to move into week one. There will be a new video down here under directions for you to show you how to do the week one work. So I'll be back with you on week one.